Hey guys, welcome to Emberscape and Yarek here. And today will be a very different kind of video. We will be checking out one website, it's called Inclusiopedia. And there, I saw a glimpse already on that website what's there. And there is lots of very nice pictures of Ember. Like every single one is like museum grade. So let's go and check it out. And so this is our website and from the very start we can see that this website is not just about the ember, it's inclusions in minerals and gemstones and the website is very nice. I sh the link to the website will be in the description if anyone wants to check it out. <laughs> wow, look at these things, this is so cool. Garnet inclusions, eolite, peridot. Right, I can't spell it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but what I'm interested in is inclusions or organic amber. Let it load for a second and we'll be exploring the world of inclusions on the Inclusiopedia. Here we go. And the very start specimen is a crane, crane fly. So the crane flies are not that uncommon. Actually, they are quite common. Well, not necessary <laughs> museum grade piece, but still cool and flashy piece. Because look at the length of these legs of this insect. And okay, the second one is a plant. It's quite oxidized. You see it's very black and has this fuzziness going out. Uh, how ember is getting oxidized? On the ember surface there are micro fractures through which the air can get in and that's when the oxidation starts. So this plant is not the best preserved, but every plant are, is cool, in my opinion. <laughs> and the very third picture is feathers. Feathers are in ember are very very rare. And what's special about this one? Because these feathers, you think it belongs to birds? Well, there is a chance that it belongs to dinosaurs, because this is Burmit Ember and it's aging 99 million years old. So basically from the Cretaceous era and the dinosaurs were thriving in the time. So there is a chance that this is feathers from the dinosaur. Very cool. Mm, nice looking millipede. No oxidation here, very nicely preserved. <laughs> and the gastropod. Super tiny, I'm guessing it's like 2 or 3 millimeters. Still impressive. Too bad about this inclusion of sand from the front. Swarm of Dipteras. Always impressive looking, but not very uncommon. We are looking for something more rare. I'm guessing this one is an ant. Okay. Another millipede. Big headed Diptera. These are extinct, I think. Can't even tell. We saw this one already. As you can see, the piece is very small. But the inclusion is very cool. Another feather. This one is even better than the previous one. Once again, a chance that it is a dinosaur. It might be just a beard, but beards are also dinosaurs. Non-avian ones. And yeah, more feathers. I'm guessing the author of these inclusions really likes feathers. Very nice piece. It has this greenish color, but the ember itself is not green. It's just the light make, makes it look like that. All the kudos for the photographer. It's Federico Barlocher, and I'm thinking he is the author of the most of these pieces. The photos. <laughs> more feathers. But these pictures are basically pieces of art for me. I would much rather make a print of this picture than any sort of modern art. Fascinating. And look how busy this piece is. There is tons of stuff. Like not even including this debris inside. This is one inclusion. This is another one. Third one. Some sort of dipteras. Maybe even mite somewhere. I'm not seeing one, but there's always possibility. <laughs> How gorgeous is this one? 
five petals flower. And there is quite interesting scenario because uh, flowering plants wasn't so common before. The radiation of diversity in the species happened in basically in the Cretaceous era, before there was no flowering plants. And together with the increasing diversity of plants, the insects started thriving and a lot of insects started appearing uh, that were flowering <laughs> the plants. Yeah, and in this piece the flower is amazing of course, but we also see some sort of fungus gnat or something similar and a beetle. The beetle could be a pollinator, you never know. Even better plant. Very different species, very beautiful one. These ones would go straight on the shelf on the museum, if I would be the manager, of course. Maybe someday I will, you never know. Small museum, let's go on. More plants, and this one is heavily oxidized. Uh, you remember I was speaking about the fuzziness and black color? Yeah, and this one is heavily oxidized. And we have two cockroaches here as well, very, very oxidized. This one even, even more of oxidized. This is a very great example of oxidation in inclusions in amber. In this scenario, air is not the friend of preservation. What are those? Lots of legs, but more than six, meaning, no, more than eight, meaning it's not a spider. Very weird looking, I don't recognize these ones. This is the same insect as before, but we have also a mite here and some sort of dipteras or flying insects. Cockroach. And uh, I think this is not an ordin ordinary cockroach. This one might be a predaceous one. And if it is, it could be a modifi caputis mon manipulator cockroach. It was a predator. Very long legs and antennas. They are in extinct by now. The only living, the closest living relatives are praying mantises. All, all the whole lineage of predaceous cockroaches went extinct. Unfortunately or maybe fortunately, because cockroaches are still living and they are living with humans in the kitchens and everywhere. Mm. This will be a hemiptera with very big awkward eyes, but it's very well preserved, no oxidation at all. We can see the all the hairs on the body and the coloration even, which is quite rare in amber. Color is not very often preserved. Do you recognize this insect? This is like ultra rare specimen for the collect collectors. I didn't recognize at first looking at the head section, but looking at the wings, you see these black rectangles. This will be either a dragonfly or a damselfly. Very rare, especially in complete. In complete. Let's check how it looks like alive. Yeah, there we go. All of the damselflies and dragonflies have these black rectangles on the edges of on the wings. And, as you can see, this one doesn't have a lot of color, or maybe there is not a, enough of light. Specimen like this would cost a fortune. You would probably buy an apartment for a piece like that. You see the coloration on this Heteroptera. This is true bug. Very nicely preserved with all the colors. Wasp? Probably a wasp. Another millipede? <laughs> Look at the mandibles. This one I think is an antlion. 
the body is missing or it's very oxidized i'm not sure but the head and the mandibles look superb let me show you how ant lions look right now and the name comes from the fact that in the larval lions not lies jesus there we go this is an adult beautiful right and this is larva the same strong mandibles they they basically eat ants that's where the name comes from yeah probably different species probably but for sure ant lion <laughs> And this one is her Westland spider and it's posing, all the legs are in full length. Even though it's called her Westland spider, it is not a spider, but it is a rachnid. Very oxidized, not sure, probably larva of a cicada. Another beautiful millipede. And there is also a Hemiptera here, Pseudoscorpion, ah, you tiny bugger, you can't escape my eyes. They are quite uncommon. A lot more common in Burmese Ember in comparison to Baltic, but still uncommon. Very nice plant, but you see the opaqueness, not transparentness in this piece. If you look at it with the naked eye without the light, from the behind it's probably would be barely visible I like clear pieces more for inclusions but the plant is very cool another beautiful plant and a tiny wasp this will be perfect for a pendant imagine going to a party and wearing pendant from 100 mi mi million years old organic amber talking about the uniqueness of the look yeah <laughs> this is excellent example of a leaf it has some damage but the preservation is superb and there is some insects around the leaf very beautiful I would consider this one a museum grade piece Oxidized cockroaches, two pieces of them, and a pseudoscorpion once again, and lots and lots of wings in here. So, all sorts of dipteras. Interesting shape. Uh, I like the free forms shapes the most. This one is super, super clear with bubbles. Uh, this is a plant. I'm guessing the author or the owner of this collection, which is probably a private owner likes plants because so far we're seeing a lot of them this one looks like a fruit from a tree there is probably some sort of seed inside quite unique looking for sure collector's piece <laughs> big ember is always more impressive like imagine holding big piece of ember with a huge plant in it 100% museum grade piece very impressive like i love plants i have plants of my own but i actually have one right here imagine size of this plant <laughs> it's not very comfortable to hold piece like that i would much prefer to have piece like that with a big plant but I'm still happy with my own perfect plant. I will show you in a second how it looks like. It's very nicely preserved. More plants and possible gastropod. Another beautiful leaf. More flowers. And there we go. This is a banger. Complete scorpion. Slightly oxidized, but other than that, very nice condition. And it's basically posing ideally for, for the picture. Complete scorpions also cost a fortune, very rare. And this is all ecosystem in one piece. Look how busy it is. There is a millipede, there is pseudoscorpion, I think pseudoscorpion, some sort of beetles. 
basically mini micro eco system in one piece in your hand. And judging by big fingers from the side, this Corpan measures around 2 cm, may maybe even less. I'm not sure. Still very cool. Gastropods oxidized. Go on. Oh, this one is very beautiful. And the piece is very pleasantly shaped. Two gastropods. Twice better than one. Another pendant with a perfect gastropod and quite a big beetle in it. By a big, I mean tiny, because look at the size of the of the fingers. Like if you would give me at least one of those pieces, any one, I would be super happy. I might even open my own museum. Extremely oxidized spider. This one I'm not even sure if it's spider, it's so oxidized that I can't recognize it, but the stone itself is beautiful. <laughs> this is a corpse of a reptile, some sort of lizard. And it makes you think, how come the dead lizard got into amber? Well, if it would be alive, it would probably be too strong and would escape the imprisonment in the raisin. But if it's dead, it can't escape the raisin. So that's why dead lizards or corpses are more common found than the nicely preserved ones. Still cool. <laughs> this is a banger. I love spiders a lot and this one is one scary spider. I think this one is called a hip spider. And they are getting quite big. I'm not sure what size of this spider is. I can't say, take a comparison with anything, but I can show you how a life one looks. Mm -hmm. There we go. Quite scary looking fellows, right? <laughs> yeah, scary enough. Different species, but it's also Philip spider. They are very expensive and very rare. Even though the condition is not superb. This piece is work of art. It's shaped like a fin from a shark or a dolphin. Depends who we like mo more. And there's a gastropod inside. Even without the gastropod, this piece would be impressive because of the size, clearness and the color. Another corpse of a lizard, just proving my facts that big and strong inclusions might be too strong and would escape the imprisonment, but that one, there we go, it's an amber. Either this is another whip spider or this could be a Shizomida, extinct spider with a tail, because I see some sort of thingy here, looking like it could belong to the spider. I will show you a picture while editing how they look like. Very cool and quite transparent, meaning oxidized. Or this could be also Exuvia, but I'm not sure about that one. Probably just very oxidized. And look at this. Looking at a gastropod like this one, with all these serrations and structures on the shell, it reminds me a little bit of ammonite. Maybe it is an ammonite, I can't tell a difference from a gastropod like this one with an ammonite. But imagine how unlikely it is to find an ammonite in amber, and it was done before. Because ammonite are like marine creatures, they live in the oceans or the seas. And where are the raisin from the trees to get trapped in? It's in the forest, so basically not the same place. So very, very uncommon to find ammonite in amber. Another beautiful piece with a gastropod. Even more gastropods. Scorpion. <laughs> mm. 
Look at this plant. This is a basically complete fern branch inside of one big piece of amber. Extremely impressive looking. And look how sharp the plant looks like. It's not oxidized, but still looks a little bit, a little bit blurry. The piece is not very clear, but hella impressive. This one, if nothing else, it belongs in the museum. And I, I think pieces like that, they should be in the museum. It almost should be illegal to own, own a piece like that in personal collection for everyone to enjoy it. But it's kind of fair if you would pay thousands and thousands of dollars for a single piece of amber, you, you kind of deserve to have it, right? Who am I to judge? Very busy piece with big, big plant. I bet it weighs around 50, 60 grams. I would say more, but amber is very light. Unfortunately, a lot of new cracks in this piece. And cracks are the enemy of, of photographers of the inclusions because it's very hard to make photos. Oh, there we go. Three uncommon boogers, three pseudoscorpions. Cool. <laughs> this one looks almost like a real one. Look how long the claws are. And we have a first centipede. Very impressive. And what is here? I think this is another manipulator, predaceous cockroach. I'm not 100% sure from this picture, but it also has very long legs and long antennas. Complete centipede. Yeah, it's complete. I can see its antennas at the end. Very cool. Now you see, where, uh, when I was talking about the fractures are enemies of the pictures, that's why basically half of the scorpion is missing. Like not missing, it's there, but it's very hard to make a picture because of this crack. This one is absolutely stunning in preservation. We can observe all the hairs on the body and the claws. A lot of bubbles on the claws. <laughs> Very unique looking. I wonder what those dots are. Kind of looks like eyes. Wow. This is simply impressive. It's not that small. It's at least 4 centimeters I'm guessing and it's complete. Powerful claws. Like, even if you don't like fossils, if you don't like nature, seeing something like this scorpion inside of amber, it should be interesting for everyone. Maybe not every time, but at least once. I imagine if person never heard of fossils, look at a piece like that, he, he would like it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm just be becoming jealous. This one is just stunning. Look at the colors of this piece. In combination with light, it is greenish and the plant is orange. Wonderful pictures. Kudos for the author. And can you see these little bumps here on the surface? This plant was complete, but when it got cut and polished, it, it this the leaves had to be sacrificed to make the piece shiny and well visible. I would do the same, I would sacrifice some of the leaves to uncover the whole piece. More beautiful leaves. More beautiful leaves. Like every single piece in this gallery is a rare one. There is not a single one common piece. There we go. Speaking about rare, this is praying mantis. Still, at first I was a little bit confused, but I can see that it is a platodea by these two tails. Let's call them that way, probably incorrect. 
and it's adult because it has wings and triangular head for sure mantis battle i can see raptorial raptorials clearly like tiny raptorials some sort of spikes maybe some sort of variation of praying mantis from the cretaceous very cool they're hella exp expensive too <laughs> at first i was thinking this is lots of flowers but this is the same insect we saw at first you see this has legs and everything but this thing is looks like flower petals very impressive on the shelf to the museum for sure <laughs> very oxidized cockroach so speaking about more common this is one of the more common pieces in this gallery and now we are observing a crime scene like this head is little bit severed from the body I wonder was someone was trying to eat the head when it was stuck in amber or it just got it ripped off and then it fall into amber. Like every piece is basically telling its own story, like how fascinating it is telling a story after 100 million years for us. literally no idea some sort of alien big funky head weird legs and super weird tail this looks really rare i don't even know what kind of insect it is or what order of insects even yeah i will have to ask of a friend of mine what he thinks about this one super cool like virtual museum that's what it is might cicada neuroptera these ones are very photogenic but preservation on this one is not not very well not very good still cool like these fluffy antennas looks really cool with big wings this one is probably a moth I'm judging by these fluffy antennas and fluffy wings. Cool. <laughs> Speaking about uncommon and or marine creatures in amber, like this is crab. You see the claws and two pairs of legs, not three. Hmm, weird. Anyway, just imagine how uncommon for a crab to get into amber. It's basically, have you ever seen a fish in amber? I didn't, because it's a marine creature. This crab had to be like semi-terrestrial, or maybe a sweet water crab, who knows. That would explain how it got into amber. Like, in the world there's like three or four crabs existing, like overall. You are more likely to win a lottery than finding a crab in amber. And this is the same specimen, I'm guessing. Athens and the wasp. How gorgeous is this one? This is our also a flower. And it looks, it looks so good that it basically looks alive. I bet we could take it out of amber, spray some water in it and it would start growing again. There we go, this one probably wasn't dead, but it's probably also not big. This is a lizard with all the skin preserved. Too bad about all the sand in the piece that's covering the specimen. I would say a crocodile, but it's impossible. This is probably a gecko. It has a strong tail and very short limbs. What does it mean? Was it also semi-aquatic? Looks very cool, but it's quite small. 
like judging but by these big fingers from the sides it's around two or three centimeters at most in length so like this big so maybe this big so basically very tiny but very uncommon i bet it's new species also sorry for the all also's don't make a drinking game out of it <laughs> millipede wasp and the leaf scorpions <laughs> another amphibian this is a frog same reality as anything else amphibian same as with the crab very unlikely little bit even more likely to find amphibian than a crab but i haven't seen a lot of frogs in amber very cool i wonder about all this fuzziness in the piece is it some sort of sand or other kind of minerals either way very cool this just proves my point uh, about this website this is basically online museum I won't even try to guess what this is. If the picture is not good enough to judge. More feathers. Yep, this is very nice picture of a gastropod. Like details are stunning in this picture. Not so great. And yeah, this is it. So we did check the full gallery, I'm sorry if it took too long, but I hope you did like this video. You should visit the website if you like the inclusions, not just in amber, but in minerals, gems and everything else. And yeah, if you did like the video, consider subscribing and liking, so we'll try to find more websites like this and we'll share it with you guys. And for this time, that's it, so bye and see you next time.